A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate. So from the soil the Lord God fashioned all the wild beasts and all the birds of the air. These he brought to the man to see what he would call them. Each one was to bear the name the man would give it. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of heaven, and all the wild beasts. But no helpmate suitable for man was found for him. So the Lord God made the man fall into a deep sleep, and while he slept, he took one of his ribs and enclosed it in the flesh. The Lord God built the rib he had taken from the man into a woman and brought her to the man. The man exclaimed, This at last is bone from my bones and flesh from my flesh. This is to be called woman, for this was taken from man. This is why a man leaves his father and mother and joins himself to his wife, and they become one body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless us all the days of our life. May the Lord bless us all the days of our life. O blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labor of your hands you shall eat. You will be happy and prosper. May the Lord bless us all the days of our life. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house. Your children like shoots of the olive around your table. May the Lord bless us all the days of our life. Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion in a happy Jerusalem all the days of your life. May, May you Lord. see your children's children. O Israel, peace. May the Lord bless us all the days of our life. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. We see in Jesus one who for a short while made lower than the angels and is now crowned with glory and splendor because he submitted to death. By God's grace, he had to experience death for all mankind. As it was his purpose to bring a great many of his sons into glory, it was appropriate that God, from whom everything exists and through whom everything exists, should make perfect through suffering the leader who would take them to their salvation. For the one who sanctifies and the ones who are sanctified are the same stock. This is why he openly calls them brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. As long as we love one another, God will live in us and his love will be complete in us. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, is it against the law for a man to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He answered them, what did Moses command you? Moses allowed us, they said, to draw up a writ of dismissal and so to divorce. Then Jesus said to them, it was because you were unteachable that he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. 
This is why a man must leave father and mother and the two become one body. They are no longer two, therefore, but one body. So then what God has united, man must not divide. Back in the house, the disciples questioned him again about this. And he said to them, the man who divorces his wife and marries another is guilty of adultery against her. And if a woman divorces her husband and marries another, she is guilty of adultery too. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jeff and Linda are a happy married couple, but it wasn't always thus. Well, they've always been kind of happy, but in the early years of marriage, when the children were very young, Jeff was inclined to spend a little too much time in the pub, and that led to a little bit of argumentation between them. But they've, over the few years, they sorted that out. They're about, well, coming up to 50 years married soon. And they love one another. And they love one another greatly. And in the last 10 years, Doug has been struck by multiple sclerosis and it's getting worse. But the reason I mention them and talk about them is, well, because of the scripture in that gospel about marriage. And the reason, for the reason I talk about them is that they, they kind of show me what love is. The remarkable thing is that with this and it's serious, this MS, and it's getting more serious. The Linda nurses Jeff, and she nurses him with, with joy, you'd almost say. Well, you would say. She looks after him, and he's growing increasingly, certainly dependent on her. But she, you'd sometimes say, you know, I'd say, does she not feel at times the burden is great? And she doesn't seem to, I'm sure she has her moments. But as I say, the striking thing, and why, uh, one reason why I mention them is that she looks after him with, with care and with kind of tenderness and with joy in her heart, which is great and wonderful. And that couple, Jeff and Linda, and couples like them, speak to me of marriage and speak to me of real love and speak to me of God. They're sort of the gold standard, the gold standard which Jesus sets for us when he says, a man must leave father and mother and the two become one body. When Jesus lauds and praises and exalts the whole idea of man and woman loving one another faithfully, fully, until death. That's the ideal. That's the ideal Jesus puts before us in this kind of changing world and in this, well, funny world, to put it mildly. Marriage is going through a rocky kind of time, isn't it? And marriages, of course, break up too. Marriage breakup is all too common. But there's the ideal that Jesus puts before us. An ideal which maybe, well, we, none, no one reaches fully. And there are a lot of ideals, of course, that Jesus puts before us that we don't reach. I mean, we here celebrating the Eucharist this morning, Jesus says to us, do this in memory of me. And what he means, of course, is that we actually give our lives for others. Now, which of us is going to give our life for another today? 
Unlikely, I'd say, or tomorrow. Unlikely. There's an ideal. There's an ideal that we don't reach. We try, hopefully. The ideal of man and woman loving one another fully, loving one another till death, that's a huge, great ideal. So, as I say, I think of them, when I think of marriage, I think of couples like that. And I have been pleased, in a way, with this little exercise that I've gone through, seeing last what, Monday or Tuesday, that the scripture this Sunday would be about marriage. I was thinking about, about couples from whom I've learned. I've learned a lot, but I've learned a lot about God. When I see that couple, Jeff and Linda, when I see their love for one another, that speaks to me of God. I have come, and I'd say the same is true of you. You have come to know God, not so much from things that you've heard or things that you've read, you come to know God through the lives and words and actions of other people. Most likely, people who are close to you, but people whom you have seen, who have genuine love in their hearts. That speaks to us. It certainly speaks of love, but it speaks of God. It speaks of God's love for you and me. That's how we understand it. I mean, that's how we come to really understand it. So in that sense, I'd recommend that little exercise to you that you think of how you come to know love, how you come to know God. It's quite a good, well, at least it has been for me, I must say. I've thought of couples, I've thought of other people who show in their lives what some little bit of what God's love is like. And it's through the goodness, the lives, the love that people show that we come to understand and come to know God.